What's up, people? I'm back for another video. I'm actually going to be talking about a good movie today, which is nice, just because this month, holy fuck, has been just all shit. Like, at least with new releases anyway. You know, Trapped, Borderlands, The Crow, Alien Romulus. Oof. Thankfully, at least today, I'm actually going to be able to talk about a good movie. And I'm going to try to, maybe not this week, maybe this week or next week, because I don't think this week there's really anything I plan on seeing. Actually, no. That Reagan movie looks really good with Dennis Quaid, but I don't think I'm going to review it. I don't think that thing that's going to be one of those movies I just watch. And maybe if I do a video that day, I'll just give quick thoughts on it. But I don't think I'm going to, like, review it or anything for the channel. It's, I don't... You, historic movies, I'm not the person. I mean, yeah, I love history, but I... The only, like, for example, I did, like, Patriot or I did, like something because i was mel gibson i was doing mel gibson movies you know braveheart which was actually william wallace which that is a real person but i i look at that more as like a, a mel gibson film than just a obviously it's not that accurate so but most of the time i'm gonna largely don't really try to do historical movies unless it's like gladiator there's certain ones i'll do but generally no so i think reagan is just gonna be a i watch for the i watch but not for the channel but anyway Next week, um, actually, I know what we can do. This Friday, I think we're going to do either Friday or this sometime this week. I'll try to do a Friday, though. I think we'll be Beetlejuice. I'm going to do the first one. I think I'm going to maybe watch it Thursday night and then review it Friday afternoon if I don't have to work. Um, I think we'll do Beetlejuice 1 since Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice or Beetlejuice 2, whatever you want to call it, comes out next Friday. So I figure... I, like I, it just for, I just realized yeah that's coming out next week so yeah we'll do the first one this week if not latest will be I'll try to do like early next week but I do want to do it this week and then just go into the new week ahead of what happened plus like because I need to refresh myself anyway I haven't seen the Beetlejuice in a long time anyway we're not talking about that today we're reviewing in my opinion a very underrated movie that I didn't even I remember for year like a couple years ago finding out this existed I'm like I didn't, I never knew it. I was like, oh, it's a movie with Damon Wayans and fucking Bruce Willis. That's what hooked me. When I saw that they did a movie together, I'm like, oh, shit, okay, I'm going to check this out. And it is fucking awesome. Um, so the main character is Joe Halleback, who's a basically kind of, I guess, a disgraced um, former secret, uh, secret Service agent. You know, he uh, actually attempted to protect the president. Um, he becomes a private investigator, um, comes home, finds out his wife is having an affair with his, the way the movie sets it up, it seems like they're like, is one of his, I don't know, best friends, but definitely good friends, and his boss, business partner, Mike, and then Mike still gives him a job, he ends up getting killed, and we find out the reason is, because it's this whole scheme to get, uh, the, the, uh, Senator Kelly, no, not Senator Kelly Jackson. But I'm trying to find the senator. Senator Calvin. Okay, yeah. Calvin Boehner. Because he want, they want to, the bad guys basically want to legalize gambling. That's basically what it is. Oh, you also have a young um, Halle Berry in this. She she's pretty much um, plays Corey. He's there to protect her. Well, unfortunately, she ends up getting killed in the movie. Um, she's dating Damon Wayans' character, um, Jimmy, um, I don't know his last name, fucking A. Jimmy Dix, who's a former football player, but, you know, I love that this movie, each character kind of has their own little issues. Obviously, like, you know, Mike, um, you know, Joe Holland, Joe's problem is obviously, you know, he, he was, like, successful, and, um, you know, we, we find out what got him fired is he stopped Baynard from basically abusing a woman. Like, that's what it seemed like he was doing. And then he, he punched him, and obviously that got him. And then, you know, he leaves threatening calls and stuff. And I actually think this movie's actually really funny. Like, that's the other thing I like about this movie is it's it's really funny. But not in, like, that annoying way. It's a fun little classic, little buddy cop-ish. You know, Mike and Jimmy have to work together. Or Joe and Jimmy have to work together to solve Corey's murder. And it's find out it's leading to this big scheme where the villain... Um, I find the villain's name. 
Marcone is uh, the villain. Um, him and um, and he uses Milo, who's like his assassin. Basically, they're trying to make it look like that. Because knowing Howlinback's history with Calvin, they want to make it look like he killed um, Calvin. But really, it's because they want to gamble, legalize gambling. Which, I'll admit, the plot with the villains is a little... That's probably my... I guess you want to say little criticism. It's a little out there. Like, you're going to kill this senator just because he didn't... Apparently, he wanted more money. And they were trying to bribe him to legalize gambling. But, yeah, it's an out-there plot. I will agree. But I think the film itself is still really fun. The dynamic between Damon Wayans and Bruce Willis is really well done. Um, also, uh, Daniel Harris is in this movie. So this, is, this would have been a couple years, obviously, after she had just done the Halloween movies. Um, she plays Hallenbach's daughter. And very much, she pulls off being Bruce Willis's daughter. I don't remember her name in this. Um, Darian. Yeah, she was a great character. Obviously, she has a little... Is that man with her dad? No, obviously, too, because his relationship with his wife is a little strained and all that. It, it's a it's a great film, though. It's a fun little action movie. Um, and one of the things we find out is that later on in the film, that this is revealed because of the because of Darian, that Joe looked at Jimmy as a hero. Joe was actually into football and looked at Jimmy as a hero. So that's why that scene. There's a scene where Joe catches um jimmy doing coke or attempting to do coke because he was he has a drug problem um and it's one of the reasons he got kicked off the nfl like it, it was that scene because i know he he had heard about the allegations but it looked like when he saw he's like fuck man my hero's doing like it's a really well done scene well acted scene between the two like it's an all-around great film and they do leave it open for a sequel like you know make it like we want to be partners as you know, as private investigators well, unfortunately, obviously, I think they wanted a sequel, but I don't know if it just did not do well. I'm going to look that up right now really quick. I'm going to see if it, how well it did. Yep, it underperformed. I think that's why it never got a sequel. Um, I think that's part of the reason, I think, because it, it didn't. It came, apparently it came out like Christmas. It, it came out close to Christmas, too. I think that didn't help. It, it's, it, it's not a Christmas movie at all. It came out, like, December. Also, I think it's... I think this is at that time people just wanted Bruce Willis to only be the be Die Hard. I think, that, I think that was the case of... Unless it was Die Hard, we didn't really want to see Bruce Willis. I even think Hudson Hawk, great film. That underperformed, too, because I think people just wanted to see Bruce Willis. And that, maybe they didn't see him as, like, an Arnold who can carry multiple franchises. They're like, Bruce Willis is just Die Hard. Because I actually love this movie, and I would have not minded a sequel, but never got it because it didn't do well um it reminds me of a similar film i reviewed a couple months ago all nice guys let's take ball guys Caperos. nice guys that's a great film but i think that underperformed so i think it's just a case people um i think it really is just a case that people just saw bruce willis as just die hard i think because this would have been right after a year after die hard 2 and uh, a couple years before die hard three because die hard three took a couple years after the third one second one but yeah overall though eight i would probably give this film about a nine i love this movie especially as like a buddy film it's one of my favorite buddy films i actually like watching this film it's uh fun mark Cohn's a fun little villain you know he's even though the bad guy's plan's a little out there if you think about it whatever it's still a fun film i can get over like some of the little thing criticism i have but yeah it's a great little movie and Damon Wayans, I think, is one of the more underrated Wayans. He's one of the Wayans you don't really talk about. You know, mainly Sean and and uh, Sean and uh, Marlon. Like Marlon's still my favorite Wayan, but I do think Damon Wayans is very underrated. He's one you don't really talk. I mean, in this movie, I really love him in probably one of my favorite sitcoms, My Wife and Kids. Um, so, anyways, let's get into the movie. Tomorrow, the plan is... I'm either going to do it tomorrow or maybe later today. I, I got to see how I'm feeling. I'm probably going to be doing a review of... Not a review. I'll be doing a discussion about how to fix the Alien franchise. Going back to the Alien discussion of, for a bit. Because I think there is a way to fix the franchise. At least move from where we are right now with it. So I'll be talking about that tomorrow. 
Thursday, I'm going to figure out what to review. And Friday, I'm going to review the, the first Beetlejuice since Beetlejuice 2 comes out next week. So, And then no um, bin down podcast stream this week because uh, we're going to for Bash in Berlin. But still, subscribe to Pin Down Podcast. We just did a stream the other day um, about roasting the all-in media stream. And then fucking, I was going to say something. Fucking bitch ass Tony Khan even hit the stream, so there's that. But you can watch the stream, it's still up now. Um, but uh, we will be doing predictions for Bash of Berlin. Probably we're going to be recording either Thursday or Friday this week. So, but anyways, before all that, let's uh, get into uh, the last Boy Scout. running back Billy Cole gets a call from Milo and says you better win or you die basically <laughs> we see him take some kind of drug which turns out it's PCP <clears throat> to induce like rage and he brings a gun to the field and basically just shoots a couple people I am not gonna lie very dark opening for <laughs> I would kind of say this film is a mix of comedy and action, but definitely it, there's a little bit of comedy in this film. Not slapstick, but there's definitely comedy. So I'll admit, like, this opening's pretty fucking dark. Like, <clears throat> you just see this guy shoot a couple people, and then he kills himself. And then it's, like, all on all on um, screen. And then we're introduced to Joel Hallenbach. I actually thought the scene where he's introduced is pretty funny. He's, like, just drunk, passed out in his car. And then you see, like, these, you know, kids kind of fuck with him because they think he's, like, dead. And then he wakes up, and they throw, like, a dead squirrel, which that part was kind of gross. I'm not going to lie. Um, fucking, um, wakes up. He goes home. Um, this is where we meet um, his wife, uh, Sarah, who, I'll be honest, she's probably, like, one of the weaker elements of the movie. She does not need it. I get what they were doing with the story, but to me, other than the whole affair, she's kind of useless in the movie. She doesn't really pop in. Like, obviously, besides the scene, she gets she gets caught, which I'll admit was funny. Like, he was starting to shoot, like, the the sliding door, the glass door, the sliding door. And then, yeah, his friend Mike, who actually gives him a job um, to protect this girl named Corey. And I'll admit, the scene's pretty funny. He's like, there's a couple times he does his, like, head or gut face or gut or something like that and he punches him in the gut and he still takes the job for Mike and then Mike gets in his car and blows up which we find out later because Joe reveals this that he thinks like that Mike only gave him the job so he would be the one to start the car and get killed so Mike can get the wife so and yeah um, the other thing Sarah and Joe don't really have that much chemistry. Granted, you don't really see them as a couple. They're kind of, like, strained, even when, before, obviously, she gets exposed. They're still married, but you could tell there's, like, an estranged little strain in the relationship, for sure. Um, um, obviously, I'll, I'll just say it here. We, we, uh, we don't meet Darian until later in the movie, but, yeah, we hit, they have a daughter together. Uh, that's Jennifer, uh, that's Danielle Harris. So I actually think works in these movies. It works in this movie, especially because... You don't usually see her in action, obviously. She's done horror, but but she's usually done a lot more kind of comedy, especially later in her career. And then obviously, when she becomes an adult, she does she goes back to horror. But I would say when she was like a kid or a teenager, I remember her being in like a lot of teen stuff. So for her to do like an action movie like this and actually do well. And this is only like a couple years after Halloween 5. I think this would have been like two years after Halloween 5. So... Um, so yeah, Joe exposes his wife for cheating, Mike gives him the job, then Mike dies in a car explosion. Um, and then this is where we meet Corey at the strip club, she's a stripper. 
Um, she's dating um, Jimmy Dix, who's jealous. He starts getting. Cause I don't know if she thinks he's having an affair, but granted, we are. We do find out that he is cheating on Corey because there's a scene early. I kind of forgot to mention where we're introduced to him, like kind of simultaneously, like after what had the scene with Joe, where you're introduced to him. You see Jimmy waking up at like a mansion. I'm assuming like a party happened the night before. He throws um a football at like an asshole former teammate because he's like. I was just going to say, sexually assaulting, um, like, I'm assuming, like, a stripper or something, like, a stripper or a prostitute. Like, he's forcing her head down, forcing her to give her give him head. And he, like, throws the ball at his face. It's a pretty funny scene. And then, yeah, when he wakes up, you see there's a prostitute in his bed. So he is cheating on Corey, but I don't know if he thinks she's cheating on him with Joe. So she he confronts her. Um, or he confronts him, sorry. And they have a little confrontation. Um, pretty funny little scene when they first meet. Um, um, we also get a little cameo from Eddie Griffith. He's uh, like the DJ. You see him in the background. He gets a, a little scene. And then um, Jimmy and Core have a little moment together. And I thought they had a little chemistry for the little bit. You know, Halle Berry wasn't a big name yet. So she was just a side character at this point. And then... Um, I'll say Marcone's people show up. They knock out Joe. Um, one of them, uh, or they order one of them to take Joe and kill him, while the others go to the wait uh, for Jimmy and um, Jimmy and Corey to come out. Jimmy and Corey agree to go to each go to their house, and basically Jimmy Corey implies that she can get Jimmy his bike job back, which we find out later. That she was used, she was trying to blackmail Marcone to give her a job, give her his job back. Um, that's what it, that was what the whole thing was. Um, he then follows her because they're going to go back to her house. The bad guys then attack her and basically kill her. She dies pretty brutally. They all just like unload on her. And then Jimmy almost gets killed, but Joe saves him, takes out the hitmen, and then basically at the police station they're arrested. Um, by there's this cop you see throughout the film who he's kind of a dick he's just there to be the asshole cop I think it's like Detective Mick or Ben one of them one of the detectives who kind of just shits on this is where we do actually find out what how why um, we find out that uh, Joe uh, when he was in the Secret Service um, um, protected the president from an assassination attempt. He found Maynard. Um, apparently, like Baynard, uh, he saw Baynard basically. I'll just say it, uh, beating a woman, and that's um, and then he punched him. So that's because he was Jimmy was asking what happened. So Jimmy and uh, Joe, this is basically where they pretty much become partners, essentially. They go to Corey's house. Um, they find the conversation. He finds also some coke. And they find a taped conversation between Calvin and Vader, who wants to legalize gambling. Basically, that's what he was. But when he plays the tape, because uh, um, Jimmy tries to rewind it, it fucking fucks up the tape. Um... So it turns out that Joe, this is when he realizes that uh, Corey tried to get his job back. So in a way, he kind of starts blaming himself for her death. So he leaves. But then they. this is where we got Marcon to get more hit men. This seems actually pretty funny. When these guys start beating up Joe and uh, Jimmy, that, that scene was kind of funny. Um, they they do manage to, because they, they found C4, uh, because Jimmy managed to... Um, uh, Joe managed to stop Jimmy from starting the car, which that the car was also rigged with C4. He then causes a, sh um, a sh he shoots of his C4 explodes, killing the hitmen. Um, then this is where they go to Joe's house, and this is where we meet Joe's daughter, Darian. You know they have like the kind of classic, you know, obviously daughter father kind of disagreement. Oh, I hate you, dad, kind of thing. I guess he wouldn't let her go to a party. And, oh, man, this scene was kind of funny. 
you it felt like you could buy Daniel Harris as his daughter. I think that's why I think it worked. It like she didn't it didn't just feel like a movie parent and a and a movie daughter. Like it felt like I could actually buy them being I could buy them being father and daughter. But then Jimmy goes to, to, to attempts to do cocaine in the bathroom and this is the scene I was talking about where Jimmy Jimmy attempts to do cocaine and Joe catches him and man, this scene is kind of sad to watch, you know, Joe you know, Joe, you know, it's like he has a face of like disappointment. You know, like he, it's like that, oh man. Because we, we come to find out from Darian that Joe is actually a big fan of Jimmy. And, and then even, she even gives him a card, you know, you know, to the daughter of the last Boy Scout, which, Hence the title of the movie, um, but yeah, it, it's a really well done scene because it, it seemed like because uh, at the time it was just allegations, the drugs. So when he saw, it, he's like, "Man, my hero's doing drugs." So this is that point where they're kind of separated for a little bit. Um, and they this is where the police start thinking Joe's the one doing the murders at this point, and then Marcone realizes that using Baynard, his history with Baynard. Joe's kidnapped by Milo and his men. Joe kills one of some Arcone's men. Man, it was a pretty funny scene. Like he's like, "Don't, don't touch me." And then he's like, he does it one more time. And he like punches his nose, and he just dies. Pretty brutal, to be honest. And then so Barcone basically tells him his plan. Turns out Baynard's actually even more corrupt than he initially because he wanted more money. So he's like, Bark. Basically, Marcone's like, it'll just be easier to kill him, which. It's a little convoluted and a little, like, out there as a plot, but still, it, it, it's fine. And basically, they want to frame Joe for the murder. So, Jimmy realize, starts realizing, thinking, like, Joe's in danger, and he starts realizing that Joe might be seen as the end. So, he wants to try to, instead of, he does not rescue attempt. Um, unfortunately, his, uh, Joe's daughter tags along. And I'll say this, too. For, like, Daniel Harris is one of the better, especially at this time, you know, better example of a kid actress. You know, a kid actor who's actually really good and actually pulls it off. Like, I thought she was good in this movie. She didn't feel like she was annoying. She didn't overstare welcome like some kid characters do in a lot of movies. Um, so, Joe, um, Jimmy's uh, attempt at rescuing Joe is... is foiled so basically what they're do, what the bad guys are going to do is they're going to give marcone oh there's like a i'm assuming a briefcase with a bomb and they're gonna have a picture of jimmy of joe giving the guy the the case with the bomb to make it look like obviously he murdered and then i think they're gonna kill joe and then just all that but they managed to kill the bad guys we get a a uh, big chase scene, kind of a funny chase scene. They manage to take out uh, the bad guys and get the hold of the two cases. This is where, oh, before this, um, they manage to, they get, they end up in, behind someone's dude and something, blah, they end up uh, in some guy's backyard and they leave Derry in there thinking that, you know, obviously everything's all right because they thought Milo died in the crash. Turns out he didn't. Milo kills the guy and then kidnaps Darian. So basically tells Darian, you gotta, now this is where he, Milo basically says, um, so, Jimmy and, uh, <clears throat> and Joe, um, go to the game, because now this is their new plan, they're gonna, uh, Milo's gonna snipe, um, uh, snipe, uh, Bannard, who, Bannard's not really a character in the movie, you, you just see him throughout the, sorry, you're hearing people in the fucking background, um, but yeah, um, they then, we get, they get captured by Marcone, we get a little, you know, scene where Marcone gives the classic villain exposition, but they manage to <laughs> the scene where they throw like these bullets that can basically explode and fire. <coughs> I don't know what the bullets were called, but <coughs> they threw it in like the there's like a fireplace. So it causes a little ex drop to fly. 
Um, they manage Jimmy. Uh, <coughs> Joe manages to stop. <coughs> to manages to to stop Milo from killing Baynard while Baynard. Um, we get a funny scene of uh of Jimmy getting on a horse and throwing a football at Baynard's face. So basically, so he can like duck because he has like the bullet, the gun, the gun, the sniper. You know the right on him the target right is right on him so um the SWAT managed to kill um Milo um they find the mate Marcom thinks he has the briefcase with the money but it turns out he took the one with the, the explosive because the cops found the one with the money in it and we get this funny scene where he opens it and explodes and then Jimmy and Joe become partners and sarah and joe i think are basically reconciled and they're back together and they tease like kind of like a tease a sequel like they become you know partners so i always felt like they were gonna if it did well enough maybe they would have did a sequel but i think it just it didn't but it's a good movie i have fun with it i i remember watching it and just loving it it's a fun 90s action buddy cop movie even you know it's not really a cop movie but it you know it's a buddy movie you got you got a lot of those back in you know at this time and yeah, I thought this was a good example. Joe and Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans had chemistry together. Especially, it's one of those pairings you wouldn't think would work, but it actually did. You know, but I think it's just a case of came out at the wrong time. This is at that time people only wanted Bruce Willis to Die Hard. I think so. Unfortunately, it just I guess is like if it, it's not Die Hard, sometimes this happens even with certain actors where if you're in this big franchise. And then you're in some other movie, there might be like, oh, you know, there are some actors who could survive it, even at the time, you know, like Arnold, you know, he he could do anything, even if it's not fucking Terminator, it would make money, right? But I think in this, I don't know, I just guess they just saw Bruce Willis as Die Hard at that time. Maybe they felt like it just, it didn't do well. Cause I don't, I, it's, a, it's a really good movie. I don't, I gotta look and see if maybe it came out around the same time too. It's like, a big release because that sometimes doesn't help if it came out the same week or with a week apart from like a big release so there's always that but i definitely recommend this one if you've never seen it um it's a good buddy film that's really all i could say um tomorrow alien um fixing alien because i think fundamentally the only the real way to fix alien is you've got to do something original like i've been i said it in my romulus review and even before my romulus review you can't, we can't just keep doing the xenomorph on this isolated ship where you have a group of survivors in the Xenos. You can't keep doing that film and just remaking Alien 1, even Aliens. You gotta do something different. So that's really, and I'm gonna go more into detail tomorrow, but, or even tonight about it, but I just think that's the things like the only Alien films we get now are just the the rehash of Alien 1 especially. Just like, oh, group of survive group of people go to a ship or or a space station in the case of Romulus and they find Xeno at face huggers and then it all starts. You know, it seems like we're just getting that film over and over again. So But uh Last Boy Scout, in about a nine out of ten. I love this movie. I, uh, I have fun watching it all the time. I'm surprised I didn't review. I thought I reviewed it a while ago, but I guess I did. So it's all that I did. So I was like, fuck, I got to change that. So we're going to, re- I figured why not review it. So alien, fixing alien discussion tomorrow. I'll figure out what to review on Thursday. And then Friday will be Beetlejuice, the original Beetlejuice. So but anyways, guys, I'm going to call it here. I might be doing the alien discussion tomorrow or tonight. More than likely, it'll be tomorrow. I, I, I just got to see how tonight goes, but we'll see. All right, y'all. Subscribe to the Pin Down Podcast. We'll be doing a Bash of Berlin predictions on... on um, on either sometime this week and it'll be uploaded on Saturday. Talk to y'all later. Peace.